So, friends, I am visiting the Ave Maria Grotto in Coleman, Alabama. It's about halfway between Huntsville and uh, Birmingham, and I visited it on my way back from Birmingham. And this is the creation of a monk, a Catholic monk by the name of Joseph Zoytel. I'm saying Zoytel, Z-O-E-T-T-L. So while you're looking at the creations, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about him and just tell you a little bit about his background. He was born in Germany, January 24th, 1878. In 1891, uh, which, let's see, 78, 88, which he'd have been 13, he almost died of flu that swept over Europe. In 92, which would have made him 14, uh, Father Galbert Brunner went to Europe looking for candidates for St. Bernard Abbey. And he decided to join up, Joseph did, and to the surprise of his parents, uh, he described how his father, who worked in a brewery, settled for only a glass of cider to mark the occasion of him leaving. So he was basically 14 years old. He entered through Ellis Island, there by the Statue of Liberty, and he was actually uh, a housekeeper at that abbey, and he uh, took care of the monks. He was a housekeeper for the priests and the monks in that mission. Later, he was brought to this abbey and put in charge of the powerhouse, which was built in 1911. They said that the work days were 17 hours with hardly time to get to Sunday mass. For 30 years, he had this routine. He said it became tedious for I had to pump from morning to night, Sunday included, to pass the time I started hobbies. Thus the origins of the masterpiece. Later in 18, 1918, he tells us, I began working with cement. The first thing I constructed was a church that is still in existence. Then a year later, I began some small oriental buildings, which later called Little Jerusalem. And that's what they call the grotto. They call it Little Jerusalem. Um, he created these small grottos that he was able to sell for a period of time. And that led to him, uh, in 1932, that led to him building this grotto, starting to do buildings and building bigger and bigger and bigger stuff. He made 5,000 of the small grottos, which he sold. And then he started to work on the Ave Maria grotto. Uh, on May, 19, May 17th, 1934, it was dedicated, and he continued working on it for over 40 years, using materials that people sent him from all over the world. He built his last model, the Basilica in Lourdes, at the age of 80. That was in 1958. He died on October the 15th, 1961, and was buried in a special bronze coffin. The cost and permanent quality of the coffin had as much to do with the esteem in which his fellow monks held as it did with the legacy of fame that he had left their home, or left at their home, because they, they lived around here. And I'm going to show you a couple of pictures of uh, the monk right here. And the first, the second picture I'm going to show you is a bronze statue that they created of him, which is actually behind where I'm filming. It's out in the, the little thing. I didn't get video of it. Um, I didn't realize it until later. And then here's a couple of other pictures, him walking around and a couple of other things. So I'm going to be quiet and let you just enjoy looking at the creations. Thank you so much for watching, friends, and tighten up.
So this was all built by one guy, mm -hmm. but he died in 61, so the stuff's been out there since 1961. Wow. And you say Yeah, and yeah. On the back of the book. Now, is that all monks that did that? Now, on the back of the book, you say about Leo Swiger. Okay. He had a book. Oh, okay. Yeah, I saw the Great Wall of China look new. Okay. I saw that, yeah. The two that's up here. Okay. So yeah, so he's. I mean, you got to keep those things up. I'm sure trees right. fall and all kinds of stuff. So very cool. Thank you. It's interesting. So there you have it, Ave Maria Grotto, and there is the gray ghost waiting on me. I gotta go. Tighten up every chance you get.